Good morning, professor, both professors. And really, you helped me a lot in my <laughs> registration. Thank you. And uh, uh, my name is Lee. And um, my topic today is uh, uh, about the digitalization in China's sportswear industry. And uh, uh, you may wonder why I choose this topic. Uh, no, I have talked a lot about China. But I think it could be useful for us to have a uh, global perspective from what's happening on the other side of this world to this global program. So as well, um, I'm going to show this as my final. Uh, okay, so from this chart, we can see that in the past five years, China's sportswear uh, business has been growing steadily. But what you might not know is here, our uh, growth rate has been, uh, appears to be a uh, turning point in 2018. And after that, this growth rate has been cool, going down all the way, and especially in 2020. And for Nike, as you may see, our market share has been leading for many years. So I think it's a good opportunity for us to take Nike as an example to uh, deep dive this market to see what's going on. And uh, from some inside data, as you may see, our 2020, that uh, has been hit like a minus 4% um, growth. So that's never happened in the past 10, day, uh, 10 years. So uh, as this picture shows, this uh, was the Wuhan lockdown. So here is the uh, Nike store over there. And it was shut down like for three months and nobody stayed. So we can see our business has been interrupted um, greatly in China's marketplace. So that's why we need a solution. So um, uh, after we have deep dived China's SWOT, uh, we can have a final clue of our solution. And first we talk about their our strengths. We have great reputation, sustainability, and we have products for local consumers. That's great. And we also some have some uh, weaknesses, like we have low product diversification, which looks too much like 60% to shoot. And we have losing exclusivity because we have partners with some multi-brand uh, partners. And we also have a very high price. I, I think everybody share our similar experience that we cannot afford a pair of AG1. So uh, we also have analyzed the threats. So like the main threat was such US and China's relationships, they were very tense, even as for today. And we have uh, get have competition from local brands. We have uh, like supply chain issue, which has been moving out of China like two years ago. Okay, uh, but still we have some opportunities. Like we have emerging markets, diversification of our product portfolio, and women business. So I will talk more later. But um, to summary all those things, and we cannot ignore the vulnerabilities uh, due to the political reason and we have very fierce, uh, fierce, uh, uh, fierce relationship between two of us. And there is a boycott as you may see that um, after Nike published an announcement to support a uh, cotton league national, uh, international wise, but uh, this, uh, this league shows that they do not support Chinese cotton. So after that, our, uh, a lot of Chinese celebrities published those uh, um, termination of contract on Weibo, our Chinese uh, Twitter. And after that day, our business like, hoo-hoo, goes down very deeply. <laughs> so that's not going to be happy about, uh, about it, but uh, it's not necessarily means uh, we are out of cards. So we still have cards. like. Uh, from an uh, inside other's perspective, we see at least three opportunities. Women's business, which is now only 23%, but uh, from China's professional women, especially in Olympics, like uh, in Tokyo this year, our female professional uh, athletes has been tripled the number of male. So, which means we have at least 50% uh, growth in this market share. And also we have emerging sports. Like uh, we used to focus too much on basketball and uh, running, but we now have like 
street dance, skateboarding, ski, stuff like that. We even have Winter Olympics. So we will have more activities in those sports. And also we can have some more investment in North City tiers. We used to only focus on Beijing and Shanghai, those global cities, but we have a big China over there. So we have more marketplace to dominate. So with those internal opportunities to plus on out, um, outside trend, which is the digital retail trend in China's marketplace, we now have mobile payments, like in China, no bank use cards anymore, and we only need to just scan my phone yeah. and we can pay it everywhere. And now we have mobile channels, like we can shop everything and on the internet in the morning and it, it can ship to our my, my place, like in the afternoon. That's huge cost. So, and also we have like AI and machine learning uh, to enable retail. Like there are a lot of algorithms to enable retail uh, from line uh, officers and the employees to be more efficient. So uh, with those leverages, we can, we can see that digitalization can be a helper to us now to save our business from a very deep place. And so I have uh, drafted a marketing plan uh, thanks to the template <laughs> that uh, Dr. Kenny shared. shared and uh, uh, I will share it from five P's perspective. The first one is placement. Um, so we can target 50% uh, of distribution from offline stores to online and digital channels. So like a 10, uh, a 10 years ago, um, the majority of our uh, business, like 84% was in offline stores uh, by uh, this year, and it's only 61%. So um, we can see the digital channel has been uh, increasing uh, steadily. So um, we say that in the, five, uh, in the next five to 10 years, we can uh, foresee um, upcoming growth and we can uh, invest like two channels, many. First one is to partner with China's existing internet tycoon, like Timor, um, JD, and TikTok. And also we can have some uh, brand on channels like, uh, like Docom and Snickers apps. So as for the price and promotion, um, we see that it's easier for us to get leverage those sentimental index to guide our timing and the location of our promotion strategies. For example, in US, we can say last year, we have a rapid um, price rising in the secondary market of our uh, high heat shoes like the AJ1 or SB Dunk. But at the same time, in China's uh, web users, we can see the awareness and the participation of their boycott of those companies has been steadily growth. So that's gonna be great if we invest some uh, campaigns in uh, bad timing. So if we can leverage those um, sentimental index, that could be very useful for the decision makers to make those strategy. So as for the products, um, we can see that digitalization can be very helpful to us uh, stock and uh, uh, supply chain management. Uh, for like um, offline stores, as you may see, we have those traffic control program to track their movement from the moment they enter the store to the moment they walk out. And without sacrificing their, their privacy, it's, they are, they are. for example, this gentleman is showing like a spot <laughs> in the screen. So it's very safe for them. And also we like, we have RFID, which can just simply insert and check in the product. We can track the life cycle of it so that we can maximize uh, our um, product's efficiency. At last, uh, from people's wise, as we can see that uh, there are some uh, digital solutions uh, which enable us to transfer our half of our business to online channel, which enable us to have more data set. And also have uh, we in the offline channel, we have those retail stores. So we have listening you uh, this kind of uh, digital solution to help us to collect customers' feedbacks with very uh, unbiased uh, sample size and with uh, very qualified uh, consumers' feedback from variables, from demographic variables and behavior variables, and also sometimes we have uh, psychological variables 
to evaluate their um, feedback to keep continuing to improve our people's uh, service level. So um, at last, our KPI aims to add 20 percent in women's business, 10 percent in emerging market, and 10 percent for low-tier cities. And also, we have to invest through three um, uh, perspective from digital pro uh, projects, like we would invest in infrastructure, data professionals, operations, and each of them will have multi KPIs to follow their efficiency, so that we can see whether those projects can contribute to our uh, business growth or not. So that's but that's the least, and even I could say that the most important thing. <laughs> When we come to back to China's marketplace, the most important thing is to get transparency uh, with Chinese government and our uh, Western uh, interferences. So from Chinese government wise, we, we would say that they need to uh, create a more supportive transformation environment for Western uh, investors, and they need to promote competition and the two neutral uh, local innovations in this market to help it to be more healthy. And also, for Western entrepreneurs, we need to partner with local data companies that used to be those retailers offline, but data companies. For example, like WeChat, they already have like over a billions of users, so there are a lot of data sets that can be uh, offline. And also, to adapt to local context, just like I just mentioned, we have different scenarios in US and uh, uh, China's consumers' uh, reactions to different things. So we need to adapt to local context. And finally, we need to uh, achieve a win-win situation between two countries and uh, two countries' conflicts. So uh, with all these efforts, we believe we can achieve a system of growth with uh, Nike's experience scale to more uh, sportswear complaints, no matter Adidas or some local brand in China, this whole market can go up. So that's it, and thank you.